All right, 32, we got and that it's part of a community service program, students in three middle school grades, six, seven, and eight, each chose to participate in one of three school-sponsored volunteer activities. The graph below shows the distribution for each class for the three activities. All right, I wonder what they are, but okay. Based on the graph, which statements must be true? Okay, we gotta read these. All right, of all the students who chose activity B, the greatest number of students were in grade six. Okay, so we can't say that because we're not given um, counts, we're given percents. So we can't actually compare counts from one group to another because there could be a thousand in group seven and maybe a hundred in group six, or maybe like 50,000 in group, eight, group grade eight. Probably not, but you know, the, the total amounts could be different. We, we can only compare proportions. So it's not gonna be A. Grade seven and eight had the same number of students who did not choose so again, nope, nope, we can't take the same number. Nope. Maybe say same percent, but nope, no same number. The grade with the greatest percentage of students who chose activity, the greatest, okay, the greatest percentage of students who chose activity C was grade eight. Okay. So we look at grade eight, it's the greatest percentage that chose activity C, this would be the percentage probably a little less than like 40, but no, what, it wouldn't be that because it would actually be set seven or grade seven. So you can't answer that, but this, is, this just happens to be false. And part D for students in grade seven, the number who chose activity C was greater than the number who chose activity B. Yeah, so within its own grade, you can, you can, you can say that this amount, the count here is more than the count here, because again, it's proportioned but within the amount. So like the amount in grade um, C was about 40%, or in activity C, I mean, it was about 40%. And activity B was low, is like maybe 30 something percent. But D would be our answer. 33, a large airport data were recorded for one month and how many baggage items were unloaded from each flight upon arrival, as well as the time required to deliver all the baggage items on the flight to the baggage claim area. A scatter plot of the two variables indicate a strong positive linear association between the two between the variables. Which of the following statements is the correct interpretation of the word strong in the description of the association? Okay, so when we're talking about association, when we're talking about strength, um, we mean that the, um, that the linear regression line um, does a good job of predicting values for, you know, for Y or the exponential variable. So the stronger it is, the better it does predicting, meaning like the closer the dots follow the um, line. So like something like that would probably be strong, but if the points were like this, he doesn't do a good job at, at approximating it. So we wanna, we wanna see what, which of these says that. So the, No, so, so it would be, so see, if you read B, the actual time required to deliver all the items to the baggage claim area based on number of items unloaded will be very close to the time predicted by the least squares regression model. Yeah, see, so it does a good job predicting. So then B would be our answer. All right, 34. A group of men and women were surveyed to investigate the association between gender and the number of friends the person has on social media, on a social media website. Results are shown in the table below. Interesting. Which of the following procedures is the most appropriate for investigating whether an association exists between gender and the number of friends a person has on a social media website? Okay, so from here, since we're talking about um, two categorical variables, we know right away it's gonna be a chi-square test because um, a test for mean difference or uh, proportions, you have to look at, you're gonna have, you know, um, values, values of, you know, you know, P hat or values of, you know, mean, values of mean, stuff like that. But here you're, you're looking for an association between gender and number of friends a parent, a person has on social media. And see, they broke, even though number of friends can be measured on like 
a quantitative scale. It's like you have like groups, they're broken up into groups. You can call this group A, B, C, D. Like those numbers really represent just groups, still categories. Now, so it comes down to D or E and it wouldn't be a chi-square test for goodness of fit because it would only, it would only have to be if you can, if you're testing um, like basically the distribution of one variable across like these age groups or, so, or across these number of friends for men. But since you have two by, you have two across multiple groups, you have a chi-square test for independence. So your answer would be D or E. In 35, Carly commutes to work and her commute time is dependent on the weather. When the weather is good, the distribution of her commute times is approximately normal with mean 20 minutes and standard deviation two minutes. Let's draw that. Let's have a distribution. Mean 20, standard deviation two. Let's have this be X or X values. And when the weather is not good, the distribution, the distribution of the commute times is approximately normal with mean 30 minutes and standard deviation four. So let's have this be Y. Suppose the probability that the weather will be good tomorrow is 0.9. Which of the following is closest to the probability that Carly's commute time tomorrow will be greater than 25 minutes? Okay, so there's two ways you have to, there's two um, situations that you gotta consider. You gotta consider like, if the, what the probability is when the weather is good, because when the weather is good, the probability would follow this distribution. This is when it's good. But if it's not good, then you have to consider this distribution. So the, so the, the probability probability that her commute time, let's just say C, her commute time is greater than 25, is equal to 0.9 times the probability that X is greater than 25 plus 0.1, because that means there's a 10% chance of not having good weather, point times the probability of Y being greater than 25. This is a very bad, a very bad handwriting. Y is greater than 25 is what I meant to write here. I'm gonna, let me fix that. Probability that Y is greater than 25. So we've got to calculate this now. So for this, we can use our calculator. You can literally type that all in. 0.9 times, go distribution, normal CDF, times, and we have a normal distribution with the mean of 20, standard deviation of two, or oh, sorry, um, we wanna, so do we lower bound, upper bound first? So 25 comma to like a billion or whatever. Then you enter the mean followed by the standard deviation. So remember the syntax after normal CDS, CDF is lower, upper than the mean and standard deviation. And again, if you have a more advanced or newer calculator, it's you're gonna have it's, you don't have to memorize this syntax. You just, you'll see slots for it. That'll give us that first part. But then we have to add this to 0.1 plus 0.1 times the probability of y being more than 25, which will follow. It's still 25 comma to like a million for like your bounds. Comma. This has a mean of 30 and a standard deviation of four. So they add up to then 0 0.095. And so the answer is C. All right, so I hope that helps. Good luck, but let me know if you have any questions on that in the comments.